Hello everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Blades of Avernum. Last episode, we completed the first scenario by Ephesus, Adrift. A very interesting scenario in which we ended up on a ghost ship out at sea. And we had to defeat all the ghosts and the captain in order to get out. It was a very well put together story. I liked it a lot. This Ephesus, this Ephesus guy, he's promising. Time to move on to the next scenario we have by him. For level 5 party, we have the Siege of Copper Peak. Even the distant shores of Vantanas hold adventure and excitement. Thinking you could use a change of scenery, you hopped on a ship to Vantanas, the dark and mysterious tropical continent of Ermarian. Not for the dark mysteries, but for the beaches. Of course, adventurers rarely get even the most well-deserved vacation, and it wasn't long before you were summoned before the Imperial Governor of Woodsmuir. This is how you find yourself in Stone's Throw, on the other side of the continent from Woodsmuir. You were to speak with the mayor regarding your assignment, which has been kept annoyingly vague. After a few drinks at the local tavern, you think you're finally ready to find out what your mission is. Alright. Quest added to our list. What is it? Speak with the mayor. Okay. Mayor Skellig of Stone's Throw. Stone's Throw. I like that name. Uh, what have we got gear-wise? Yeah, we've got a decent amount of stuff. All right. You attempt to engage a soldier in conversation, but he's more interested in the bowl of soup in front of him. This man is engaged in conversation with the others at the table. When you try to get his attention, he turns and glares at you. Can't you see we're having a conversation? He says, flashing a look at his companions. This woman is having a conversation at the table and seems none too pleased when you interrupt it. Mind your own business. And this guy? This soldier is conversing with the other people at the table. When you try to get his attention, he looks at you and pats the blade at his side. We don't take kindly to people sticking their noses where they don't belong. Move along. The man who runs the smoking halberd is, a ra is rather short and quite bald. He seems preoccupied with obsessively cleaning the area behind the bar, wielding a grimy rag like a rapier. When you catch his attention, he gives you a crooked grin. Once more, the name's Timothy. Anything else I can get you, seeing as you polished off those drinks? Can you tell us anything interesting about this area? Well, Stone Star is a pretty quiet city, but we're right at the edge of the frontier. The islands past here can be pretty rough at times. Of course, I don't know how much about the, those places. I stay around here where it's nice and safe. How about some food? Well, you know, why not? Seems natural that a free round of drinks should come with sandwiches. He disappears into the kitchen for a moment and emerges carrying a few giant sandwiches. Still grinning the same unsettling grin, he hands them to you. Just about all I've got in terms of food here, but it's good. Enjoy! And we all got a deli sandwich. Not bad. We actually have some food. I like that. Alright. I guess we can leave. You step out of the smoking halberd into the streets of Stone's Throw. It's fairly quiet. Looks like you should find your way to the mayor's office so you can find out why you've been called here. The Smoking Halberd. Sometimes a halberd is just a halberd. I like... This guy, this is the second scenario, and I'm already seeing a lot of very unique assets. I really like this. This guy, this guy, I like him. I like the amount of effort he's clearly putting into all these scenarios. He's really proving that he knows what he's doing. Hell, this is even a low wall. I've never seen a low wall in Avernum. This is amazing. I, I already love this Ephesus guy. I've occasionally gotten, uh... Occasionally other scenario creators have spoken to me when I've done their scenarios to give their own comments or opinions as I go through it. I hope this Ephesus guy does as well, because I'm really liking this. <laughs> I'm already impressed. Oh, well, that's cute. As you open the door, a wave of foul stench washes over you. Yep, this is definitely an outhouse. Yes! Yes! So... So rarely do we ever even find outhouses or bathrooms or the like. In any situation. I'm loving this already. I feel like I'm throwing too much praise on this when I've barely started. But, uh, what can I say? I like it. The ch this child runs away before he can say much of anything. Okay, fair enough. Nice little statue in the middle here. 
It's probably one of these big ones that, uh... That the mayor's in. That's probably where the mayor is! Okay. Couple of small houses. Doesn't look like there's gonna be any items in there, but I will open them all up anyway. Huh, that's interesting. Hold on a second. No. Okay. Interesting, it was like I could investigate them, but there isn't really much of a reason. Alright, let's take a look in these buildings here. A blast of warm air greets you as you open the door. Ah! This man bears the marks of a long career in smithing, namely numerous burns and cuts along with a singed beard. Still, he appears to be friendly and he waves when you catch his attention. Greetings, friends. Name's Skip, and I run the forge here. If it's pointy or made of metal, I probably got one of it for sale. Oh, and he gestures at the robed young man hunched over an anvil. That over there is Duncan, my apprentice. And don't bother him. Why shouldn't we bother your apprentice? Well, isn't it obvious? I don't want him getting any more distracted than he already gets. You hear a muffled thud followed by a yelp. Skip turns to look at Duncan and sighs. Soak it in the bucket for a while, Duncan. You'll be fine. What do you make here? Skip points at some of the armor and weaponry lying around the room. Well, pretty much anything that adventurers like yourselves could want. Armor, weapons, and of course the more mundane tools that probably wouldn't interest you. So who makes the stuff, you or Duncan? Skip looks insulted. Of course I make them! Duncan is just my apprentice, and... Well, it'll be that way for a long time if he doesn't shape up. I swear to you that nothing passes through this building without me working it into shape. Every finished piece must meet, must meet with my approval. Okay, then. Let me see what you have for sale. Bronze halberds, iron spear, iron and bronze stuff. Helms, armor, yeah, not too shabby. But I think our gear is already, well... Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's about up to... Up to snuff. I think we're good here. Thank you. Bother, bother, bother. This young man appears to be an apprentice. He's currently occupied with sharpening a spear, and he's having some trouble with it. You decide it might be better to leave him alone, lest he injure himself. Okay. This shop seems to be abandoned, and it looks like it's been that way for quite some time. Fair enough. Ooh, a bakery. The woman behind the counter looks exhausted. When you catch her attention, she weighs, but doesn't get up. The name's Elena, and I'm currently a cook. What can I get you? What do you have for sale? Food. Ooh, a cake. Elena wearily gestures at the food lying around the shop. What do you mean by it currently a cook? Oh, well, this is how it goes. My husband normally runs this place. He's a great cook, but he's a stickler for ingredients, so every so often he goes out to the mainland to replenish his stocks. And when he does, well, someone's got to watch the shop. I can't cook worth a damn, but on honestly, I just managed to get one cake out of the oven without burning it. But it has to be done. Hopefully he won't be gone very long. There was one time he went missing for a week because he was looking for some rare mushroom. I was not pleased. Can you tell us anything about the stone's throw area? Well, I'm not... Well, when I'm not covering for my husband, I'm a hunter. So I'm familiar with the lay of the land, and I can safely say that there isn't anything on the island that would interest adventurers. Never mind, that's all. Elena nods and sighs. At a glance, it's apparent that this building is a chapel of sorts. Looks like it hasn't been used very much lately. One lone priest is pacing the room, occasionally stopping to touch the altar. Not gonna steal that. When this aged priest sees you, his face lights up. You get the feeling that he doesn't get many visitors here. Greetings. I am Father Andrews of the Church of Unexpected Windfalls. How may I help you? Why is this place so empty? Oh, well, I have a theory. People tend to be lazy to the point where they ignore the wonderful workings of chance that go on right in front of their faces. I've tried teaching the people here, but to no effect. I'm starting to regret my having been posted out here, but so it goes. Why not ask to be posted elsewhere? Father Andrews shakes his head. 
It is not the way of the Church to question the operation of chance. We ought to simply accept it. And besides, fair is fair. I did draw the short straw, after all. <sighs> and yes, we used actual straws. Okay, fair enough. T can you tell us about tell us about your beliefs? Well, the Church of Unexpected Windfalls follows a simple philosophy. We simply accept the good things that happen to us in life as well as the bad. It is a faith of tranquility and peace. After all, it's just a fact of life. You take the good, you take the bad, there you have it. Sounds like he's been working on this speech for quite a while. Can you heal us? Ah, oh, but of course. It's the majority of my work out here, aside from raising awareness of the church. Are we talking about a minor injury or something more, well, morbid? For lesser, he lesser healing, I charge ten coins per person. But for a resurrection, the process is more complicated. Huh. That's actually a reasonable price. I mean, normally, whenever you ask, Hey, can you heal our party? It's like, sure, 150 gold, 300 gold, 1,000 gold! Ugh. But 10 coins a person? That's a reasonable thing, in my opinion. It's not extortion. On second thought, never mind. Can you teach us any spells, though? Sadly, I cannot. It is an honor to learn holy rituals, and I cannot pass them off to just anyone. My apologies. What if we pay you? He shakes his head. I do not accept bribes. Not even really, really big ones. Okay, then. Pity. Would have been nice to learn some of these spells. Oh, we can actually go back there. Yeah, we could. And that's all there was to do that there. Alright. This appears to be the main barracks for Stone's Throw. A few off-duty soldiers cast a board look at you as you enter. Yeah, there's not going to be anything in those boxes, I think. Now, oh, what's this? Armory, no stealing. Seriously, don't do it. You break down the door to the armory, which really seems to anger the nearby soldiers. Come to think of it, how is it that you usually get away with that? <coughs> Perhaps I shouldn't have done that! Reloading. All right, made it back to where I was. Didn't actually take that long, and this time we're not actually going to enter the armory. It just pisses people off. Let's talk to the commander here. Actually, okay, the soldiers don't actually acknowledge us. This man appears to be a fairly run-of-the-milk Empire captain, in that he looks like bitter anger is his default emotion. He greets you with a grunt, barely looking up from the papers in front of him. I'm Commander Sigmund of the Empire Army. I'm currently not hiring adventurers. Do you normally hire adventurers? Not when I can avoid it. He burps. That appears to be all you're getting here. How big is the garrison? Classified. He continues writing, nonplussed. What does a garrison normally do? Patrol, guard the docks, keep things safe. We can't all be glamorous adventurers, after all. By the way, go away. I already told you we don't need you. All right, all right, I'm leaving you alone. You open the mayor's office, and the mayor immediately stands to greet you. Ah, oh, lovely! You're here. Come, we must speak. Okay, then. The mayor of Stonesthrow is a very important figure in the realm of empire politics. And this one man rests nearly all of the political sway to be found in the islands around Vantanus. Honestly, you expected him to be a bit taller. And now he cheerfully greets you. Welcome, welcome. We have much to discuss with regards to your mission. Where shall we begin? Could you explain our mission? Ah, oh, but of course, Mayor Selick says, pulling a map out of the islands from his pocket and laying it on the table. Now, the city of Copper Peak, he says, gesturing to an island northeast of Stone's Throw, is under siege from a group of rebels. Now, we're not sure how the rebels slipped such a force past us, but here's what we do know. The group of rebels in question calls itself the Dark Side Loyalists, and their goal is the wholesale takeover of the Empire. Up until this point, we had heard nothing but whispers of their activity, but now they have come into the open. Your mission is a very simple one. Break the Siege of Copper Peak by whatever means necessary. Drive off the Dark Side Loyalists and gather as much information as you can. You can get a boat at the docks to the east. Do you have any questions? What can you tell us about Copper Peak? Copper Peak is a town that wasn't founded all that long ago. It was in part meant to oversee the mining of copper deposits on the island, but we haven't developed the infrastructure yet. 
Right now, it's mostly an outpost for mages and others who want to study the islands. I don't know much about what they do there, truth be told, but from what I've heard, it's not a very exciting place. That makes it even stranger that the Dark Side loyalists would attack it, of course. Perhaps they need a fortress to be based out of, or something like that. Then again, if it's a town... Uh. Why can't you tell us about the Dark Side loyalists? Not much, I'm afraid. If the rumors have any truth to them, they have infiltrated quite a bit of the Empire's bureaucracy and military, but I don't believe them. All we know for sure is that they want to take control of the Empire. And before you ask, I know for a fact that my staff is entirely clean of involvement with the Loyalists, as is most of the city. I also know for a fact that you folks are clean. Your record checks out perfectly. Of course, they have a very strict stance against non-humans, but you might have known that already, he adds hastily. What can you tell us about the rest of the islands? Well, first off, if you need supplies, you ought to stock up here while you're here. There aren't any more cities between here and Copper Peak, just some farms and guard posts. Other than that, the other islands aren't terribly relevant to your mission unless the Loyalists have a presence there. And truth be told, we haven't gotten consistent reports from the islands east of here for a week or two. Be careful, basically. Is there any other assistance you can give us? I'm afraid not. The Empire as a whole isn't ready to accept that these Loyalists exist, much less that they are a serious problem, so I'm limited in the material aid I can give you. In fact, it's only by the work of my friend Torvald here, he says, gesturing to the liaison, that I was even permitted to hire adventurers to work on this problem. Of course, if my request had been denied, I might have done it anyway, he adds with a smirk. All right, thank you. Liaison Torvald nods. Yes, so what is it? Can you tell us anything else about our mission? I'm afraid the specifics of the mission are beyond me. The mayor should be your primary source. I'm just the political force that made the mission possible. What's your role in all of this? The liaison smiles. Well, I'm the one who did the political legwork. You see, not all of the Empire is as forward-thinking as myself and the mayor here, and so they are not ready to accept the threat posed by the loyalists. I was the one who argued before the Imperial Governor in Woodsmere for a quick and prompt response, and I successfully lobbied for the hiring of a group of adventurers. And that would be you. Well, we appreciate your efforts. This man appears to be the Mayor's secretary. He also appears to be asleep. Okay, can't go in there. Alright, that appears to be everything in the town. You stride out of the gates of Stone's Throw, finally clear on your mission. All you have to do is find off a mysterious group of rebels. Lovely. Of course, before you can get to Copperbeak, you need a boat. If the mayor was right, you should be able to get one down at the docks. A few farmhouses are scattered around this clearing, surrounded by healthy-looking crops. You stop for a while to talk with the farmers, but don't learn anything relevant to your quest. I like the idea. It's This is the second time we've been in this, uh... In this area, I have a feeling that's going to be a regular thing. The sea breeze hits you full f in the face as you leave to the forest shelter and stroll towards the shore. It's hard to imagine anything being wrong in such an idyllic location. Oh well, it's not like you're surprised. You're adventurers, and trouble seems to seek you out wherever you go. At least it pays the bills. Up oh, here we are. This dock is fairly standard for the settled islands of Vantanus. It's nothing more than an anchored stone platform sent into the beach. You should seek out the dockmaster before the boats are needed for something. Oh, I can actually look in the south side here. That's very interesting. A tall wooden watchtower watches over the harbor, firmly anchored in the sand. You can see a few guards at the top. Aside from the garrison and th stone's throw, this is the island's only defense, making the potential loyalist threat even more frightening. They can besiege one island. What's stopping them from besieging the rest? Yeah, I'm just gonna look around the island. There's probably nothing here, but I'm going to do it anyway. I must say, I like this, uh, I like this whole thing. I like having this tropical island thing. I mean, it's normally mountains, valleys, and all that kind of stuff, but... Having tropical islands, you don't really see that in uh, in RPGs like this. I like this. Okay, we can only get to like one point away from it, like that.
Oh, hello. Okay, there's nothing we can do with that crate. So it's a storage, authorized personnel only. Why do I have a feeling that if we tried to get in, we'd probably end up getting attacked because we're not allowed in there? And yet I'm so tempted to take a look in there anyway. Because it's how I am, damn it! <laughs> Stuart, I'm gonna save and then take a look. Alright, can we go in? This storeroom is rather unimpressive by adventuring standards. No loose wealth, no magical items. Looks like there's nothing but junk in here. You say that, and we find some fine lockpicks and healing herbs. Who said there's nothing useful in here? I mean, the rest of it is all fine meal. And a pickaxe, and a couple of poor furs. But hey, we got something useful in here, so I'll take it. This appears to be a bunkhouse for the guards and sailors who pass through here. It's not the cleanest place you've ever seen, but these people probably don't have a choice. This guard is out cold. He didn't even bother taking off his armor before collapsing. This sailor is out cold, sprawled across a bed. It would probably be unwise to wake him. Wow, this room is full of paper. There's so much scattered around the room that you're not sure where you can step safely. A weary-looking bureaucrat sits at the desk in the center of the paper maelstrom, and he's smoking a pipe. This man appears to be an aging bureaucrat, one who no longer even notices the amount of paperwork scattered about the room. He barely notices you, either, as he seems a little preoccupied with the pipe he's smoking. Yes, what is it? He asks, pausing to blow a few smoke rings. The placard on his desk reads, Doc Master Henrik. What do you do here? He points to the placard on his desk. Does anything really interesting go on here? He shrugs. Have any quests you need doing? Sorry, nope. We need a boat. You explain that you've been sent on a mission by Mayor Skellic, and the dockmaster nods, waving absentmindedly. Yes, yes, fine. Take the boat at the second dock. Try to bring it back in one piece if you can. Okay, then. This guard pays no attention to you. Apparently, the crates sitting around are more important than you are. You know, you don't get much out of this sailor that isn't swearing or complaining about a lack of shore leave. In fact, he's pretty much incoherent. Okay, it's not that boat. It's probably that boat. Yep, it's that boat there. I don't need to go to the end of all of them, but I am anyway. As you start paddling, you very nearly flip over the side. A few moments of panic balancing later, and you've managed to regain your balance. Slowly, you get a better handle on the oars, though the boat is now creaking ominously. With any luck, this thing will be enough to get you out to Copper Peak and back. You're finally starting to get the hang of this boat, and you slowly begin to ease your way out into open water. The waves start to pick up, and water starts to spill over the sides of the boat. A quick look out at the ocean tells you that this boat won't be able to handle the deeper ocean. You'll be much safer if you stay close to shore. Well, okay then. I mean, I'm just going to uh, uncover the rest of the water that I can. All right. And I think I'm going to end this episode here. Seems like a decent place to end. Next episode, we will move on with our explorations of the sea and make our way towards Copper Peak. That'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Chesswick44, that is Fox, Sheik, Bonnie, and Draco. This has been a Blades of Avernum Let's Play, and I like those little docks. You don't really see them anywhere. And I shall see you all next time.